Hello everyone, this is Kona, and thank you for tuning in for another video. I'm going to be talking about how to apply the spy's cloaking effect to TF2 models. Now, this is kind of a warning that this is a very, I would consider it a very advanced tutorial, mainly because we are going to be diving into the depths of the dreaded element viewer. Yes, the element viewer, that one place in Source Filmmaker that they, everyone tells you not to go into because you might screw stuff up. And that's true. You're going to be editing memory and stuff, so this is kind of a dangerous place to be in if you don't know what you're doing. So this is just a warning that we are going to be going into the element viewer for this tutorial. What I recommend is that you make a blank... Uh, a blank project and practice on that. Practice with the blank project. Make sure you understand the steps fully before applying it to your guys' final project. Uh, like I said, we're going to be going over the cloaking effect for the spy, and it's going to look a little something like this. And decloak like that. Minus the sound effect, you have to put that later, but uh, you get the idea. So the first thing you should do is download the file that I will provide in the description. That file contains proxy materials that we're going to be applying to our model to allow it to cloak. Now, when you open it up, when we go through this tutorial, you'll start to understand what makes TF2 so, just the model, what makes the TF2 model so complicated. They're made up of so many different parts that this is why cloaking is not such a trivial thing. It's pretty difficult to make something cloak. Now, once you've downloaded the file and unzipped it, I would recommend putting that folder into Source Filmmaker game user mod elements and I have mines right here uh, you don't have to actually put the folder here I just kinda put it here because it's a nice place I think it's a sort of a nice place to have it I don't think you have to actually put it here for this to work you'll find out later that when we want to apply these materials all we have to do is browse to this location and uh, if you open up here uh, the actual folder you'll see that uh, I prepared some of these uh, DMX texture um, or materials uh, so that uh, you can apply them to each different class and each different color of class. So uh, um, when you when you're ready to actually cloak something, you're going to be looking for the correct uh, the correct file here. Now, before we get into the details on how to do cloaking, I would recommend getting a texture viewer. In this case, I am using NEMS Tools VTF Edit. This is a great program that allows us to view the special texture or material files from Valve games. So I recommend getting NEMS Tools. It's called VTF Edit. All right, so now let's go into the details on how to make a TF2 character cloak. And I'm going to be using the spy as an example. So first off, we need to add the spy to our scene. So we'll right click and uh, add a new model. Search for HWM for those uh, high detailed models. And I'm going to select the spy down here. And we'll just start off with the red spy. There we go. So here is the red spy. Uh, and now... <laughs> This is something that most people are going to tell you not to do, but I'm going to tell you to try and do it because we're experimenting with the cloaking effect here. We're going to go into the element viewer for the spy model. So we're going to right click on the spy in the animation set editor and go show in element viewer model. Once we do that, it should switch over to the element viewer and now uh, try not to touch anything. <laughs> Uh, this is this is where it gets a little bit dangerous, so um, I'm, I'm going to only do what's necessary to get the cloaking effect in. So now that we're in the element viewer for the spy, we're going to right click on the spy's game model up here, and we're going to add an attribute. And the attribute we're going to be adding is going to be an element array. So just click on that. It's going to ask you, what do you want to name this new element array? And we're going to name this element array materials with a lowercase m, so materials. And you must spell it like that. It has to be specifically spelled like that. It can't be uh, uppercase or anything. It has to be lowercase called materials. Click OK, and now materials should be added to the spy game model. Now, if you right-click on materials, we're going to go to import element. And this is where we're going to be searching for all of those uh, files that I provided in that link. Um, here I have them all listed, and I'm going to click on Spy Red Cloak because we are trying to make a red spy cloak. So go ahead, highlight this, and click Open, and it's going to load. 
uh, and you'll see that there's a plus but uh, plus button here click on that plus button in the materials expand this and expand it one more time and expand it one more time for the children and here we go this is where it gets a little bit confusing and where you start to understand why TF2 models are so complicated there's so many parts that make up the spy that we have to actually cloak these individual parts now what we need to do is actually get these uh, parts here, these proxy materials, into the materials level of this uh, of this spy game model tree. So what I like to do is I like to select all of them. I can just click the first one and then shift click to select them all. And all I do is I click and drag right into the materials uh, materials tree branch right here. So let go, and now it should be on the same level as material or should be in materials. Now, since we emptied out this thing that it kind of made for us, we don't need this first part here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right-click and just delete it. So we don't need that. All we need are these proxy materials right here. I want to take this opportunity to try to explain uh, what's actually in these things. Uh, if I open up one of these, let's say the, uh, the spy's body, you will see a lot of different of these like properties or attributes of just this one proxy material. You see the name here. Uh, this is the path to the actual uh, texture file that we're trying to cloak, so that's really important. The cloak factor is the amount of cloak that we're applying. In this case, we're applying zero amount of cloak, which is why the spy is completely visible. But if we change this value here to, let's say, uh, 0.5, which is half cloak, you can kind of see it reflect in the viewer. You can see that the spy is sort of half cloak. So the cloak factor is the amount of cloak, and it varies from 0 to 1, 1 being completely invisible like that. I'm just going to set it back to 0 here. Cloak color tint is the actual color of the cloak when he's actually doing the cloaking. Now, this is the code for... Uh, for red because we're using a red spy this is going to be the color code for cloaking red now you can actually modify these numbers any way you want to get pretty much any color of cloak uh, actually we can just try that right here let's say I want to cloak it green um, since we're working in RGB uh, you can see that this first number is one that represents R G green and B is the last number so we're applying full red part green and part blue and so I can actually go in and let's say I want to cloak it green. I'm just going to go 0 0.5, 1, 0 0.5. And make sure that's entered in. And now if I go 0 0.5 here to at the cloak factor, you can kind of see that he's cloaked a little bit green. That's because uh, I changed the cloak uh, color tint. So this controls the color of the cloak. So, oh man, that kind of looks a little ugly. No wonder they didn't choose a green team. All right, so I'm going to change this back to 1, 0 0.5, and about 0 0.4. I know it had a bunch of zeros on there, but that should be... Oh, there we go. It automatically does it. Okay, and then I'm just going to change this back to 0. So those are the most important things. It's really the cloak color tint, the cloak factor, and making sure that this name here has the actual correct path to the texture we want to apply the cloak effect to. Now, in order to animate the cloaking effect for each of these body parts of this model, we're going to have to create an animation set for each body part. So if you go over here and you right click on, let's say, the spy's body, on the bottom, there is an option to create animation set for element. And we're going to click on that. And it's going to ask you, oh, well, what, what do you want? And we're going to say, OK, for these pop up uh, boxes. Um, unfortunately, we have to do this for each body part. So some of these are really complicated and have a lot of body parts. Uh, so this can get kind of tedious. So we'll just do it for the, uh, the remaining body parts here. Right click. I want to create an animation set for all of these. And just go OK. And there we go. So now we're pretty much done in the element viewer. We, we don't have to touch it too much anymore. We, um, now we can go back to the animation set editor. And you'll see that since we added an animation set for each of those components of the, of the model, they're actually right here. So now I want to animate 
this uh, all the cloaking effect of all the body parts. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually uh, I'm going to use the the, um, the motion editor here to actually do that. Um, I'm going to scroll a little bit here and I'm going to change my uh, my window of time to something like that. Um, then I'm also going to create some fall off because I want to create a transition from zero amount of cloak to full amount of cloak. So, you know, you can either hold shift and scroll up your mouse wheel and that will create roll off for you automatically on both sides. Or if you hover your mouse kind of near but off the edge of the time that you have selected, you have this cursor change and then all you have to do is drag off like that. So there's two ways to create. Uh, a roll off for a time selection. So now we're going to highlight in the animation set editor, we're going to highlight all of the components that we want to have cloaked, highlight them all, and we're going to change our cloak factor all the way up. You can see here they have sliders for cloak factors for everything. And as I change them, you can see that they are actually changing in the uh, in the viewport. And you'll notice that when I do that, his head and his body is missing, but he actually has, let's zoom in here, he actually has some eyes and a tongue that we have to get rid of. That's kind of creepy. So let's uh, hide those as well. So eye, eye, and tongue. So now everything is completely gone, and I don't even know where my model is. So if we scroll back over here with the timeline, there he is. And we play it back. There we go. Now we have the spy fully cloaking and then decloaking. Now I want to cover a special case for when the cloaking doesn't quite work right. And it has to do with the medic. Unfortunately, the medic has a prop on him, his glasses, that doesn't quite cloak correctly. In fact, I'll show you what I mean. I have, I have him set up here to cloak. And if I play this... <laughs> You'll notice that he completely disappears except his glasses. Imagine that, a spy cloaking as a medic and he can't cloak the glasses. It would be so obvious, like a glass is just bobbing around in midair. So we're going to have to fix this. And in order to do that, we're going to have to kind of go deep into the, file, uh, into the files of Source Filmmaker and do a little bit of coding. Just write a couple lines of code. Now, this happens because the materials for the glasses is not set up for cloaking. There's a special command that you have to put in the file in order to let the source engine know that you want to cloak that particular material or that particular material ha actually has the ability to cloak. So we're going to have to actually go in and edit some te uh, a text file in order to figure this out. Starting from your game folder in Source Filmmaker, you're going to navigate to TF Movies, Materials, Models, Props, Face Movie, and if you scroll down, there should be one called Medic Specs. And this is actually where, uh, where the uh, VTF Edit, that program you downloaded earlier, actually comes in handy when you want to browse materials because I actually have this set up already so if I click on this the medic specs VTF when I open this up here we go this is the actual texture file used for the glasses for the medic now along with each texture file there is a file called a VMT file this is a materials properties file that tells the source engine or the game what kind of properties this material uh, has and it's this one right here called medic specs dot vmt now this is actually a text file so we're going to right click on this and i'm going to edit it i have notepad plus plus but you can use any text editor so this is the vmt file for the medics glasses and we want to add a line to this so that source filmmaker knows that the glasses should have the ability to actually cloak now i'm going to put a little comment here because i, I like to comment my code um, i'm going to just say cloaking this is this is just that's just a comment the slash slash means a comment so it's not going to actually be interpreted as real code I'm just putting a little note here for myself that this line of code that follows is going to be for cloaking what we're going to add is we're going to add the dollar sign cloak pass enabled so cloak then capital P for pass and then capital E for enabled and then close the uh, close the quotes 
then hit space, and in quotes, we're going to put one. It stands for true. So that is what we're going to do. We're going to add that line. Cloak, pass, enable, just like that. And again, this is just a comment, so you can ignore it if you want. Um, and we're done, basically. We just save that file, and uh, we don't need it anymore, so we can close it out. But you're going to have to actually restart Source Filmmaker. Unfortunately, I don't know how to reload all the materials for Source Filmmaker without closing Source Filmmaker. So uh, I'm going to have to restart this. So once we restart Source Filmmaker and I do all the steps that I mentioned before, when I play this, you'll see that the glasses do indeed cloak. So that's very good. Uh, so you know, if you have something that doesn't cloak, what I recommend is actually trying to find that texture of what you're trying to cloak. And in that VMT file that goes along with that texture, make sure that you have that uh, variable enabled, that cloak pass enabled variable. Make sure it's set to one so that Source Filmmaker knows that that material should have the ability to cloak. I haven't actually tried this on every single material. Imagine having the entire level just go boom, and vanish and cloak <laughs> if you applied it to all the materials of like the props and stuff. That would be crazy. But uh, yeah, that's how you make uh, models, uh, well, specifically the player models, cloak in Source Filmmaker. All right, the last thing I want to do is go over how to cloak a weapon. And there are a ton of weapons, so the very specifics are going to be all different. But I want to show you the general idea of how to cloak a weapon. And you can apply it to different things. So first off, uh, we're going to import our weapon. I'm just going to import a knife. So we'll search for the knife and import the knife. And there we go. Now I'm going to right click and go into the element viewer for this model. I'm going to add an attribute, the element array, and call it materials, so just like before. Right click on this and go import element. Now I included a proxy material. This proxy material is just a very generic uh, proxy material. It's not specific to any type of class or anything, so uh, you can use this kind of as a start on applying proxy materials. So I'm going to import this, and just like before, um, oh, actually, no. I only have one, so that's fine. <laughs> uh, it imports just like that, and this is actually set up to be the red medic here, but we don't actually want that. What we want to do is actually apply this to the knife's specific texture, which I think is weapons, weapons, W knife and then W knife again. Now if we do that, hopefully it'll work. And there we go. We can change the cloak factor manually here and you can see that it works. But it only worked because I had the correct path to the actual texture file. And that's going to be tricky to find. You're going to have to explore the materials uh, folder in order to find the texture for each of the materials you want to cloak. This is the really tedious and really, uh, this is the part that sucks when you want to make certain things cloak. Uh, so um, have fun with that, uh, trying to find all of those materials. That's why I kind of started off with the models first, the uh, the player models, before going into weapons or hats, because it, it, it can be a little difficult to find all these different texture models. But the actual principle is very similar. All you have to do is make sure you find that texture model and you have the correct path here. So I hope you learned a little about how to apply the cloaking effect to models in TF2. And I haven't tried it with different things like Counter-Strike Global Offensive or Portal. I haven't tried it like that. And I haven't tried it on all the materials of all the weapons and items. But hopefully this is a good starting point for you to explore uh, applying cloaking effects and maybe even di different colors of cloaking effects to your TF2 items. Now, like I said before, this does involve going into the element viewer, so make sure that you know what you're doing and don't touch things that you don't know what they are. Like I said, please try to go into a blank project and practice there. Make sure you really understand in that blank project, so just in case you mess up, you mess up only that project that you, know, you can throw away later. Um, once you're comfortable with this process, you can transfer that over to the, your real project. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching and have a nice day.